Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, friends, family, and colleagues. Today we come together to honor the life and service of a true hero and member of our U.S. Marshals family. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Deputy U.S. Marshal Thomas Michael Weeks, Jr., but we call him Tommy. Would the audience please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem. Please be seated. Okay. 
I would like to begin today's ceremony with a reading from Matthew 5, 4 and John 16, 22. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. On behalf of Tommy's family, friends, and colleagues, thank you for gathering this morning as we remember and pay tribute to one of our own, Tommy Weeks. Today's turnout is a testament to the impact that Tommy's life and ultimate sacrifice has had on our agency, our community, and our country. Let it not be in vain. Let us not forget. The law enforcement community is truly a family. We run to danger, not away from it. We swear to an oath and a code that we practice in both our professional and personal lives, and one that continues long after our badges have been displayed in a retirement case. We adhere to core values such as honor, courage, respect, strength, service, and sacrifice. As members of the United States Marshal Service conducting daily fugitive task force operations across this country and beyond, we suppress evil every day. But there is a price for this dedication. It requires that we operate in the darkness and maneuver in the shadows so that others may know comfort and safety in the light. In our profession and within the environment that we work, it's difficult not to become skeptical, suspicious, perhaps hardened. But as I participated and witnessed in this week's processions of Tommy, Alden, Sam, and Josh, my faith in our community was renewed and restored as the outpouring of love, support, and emotion has been undeniable. Let it not be in vain. Let us not forget. If you had the pleasure to know Tommy, he was likable and dry-witted, but intense and full of conviction. Then he met Kelly. Now, I wouldn't say it resulted in a complete transformation of Tommy that we all knew, as I and others still witnessed firsthand his expletive-laden rants on the golf course and his vigorous and visceral defense of the Washington Capitals and the Carolina Panthers. But there was a change in Tommy, a softness in his demeanor, a lightness in his walk, a renewed joy in his life. That was Kelly. And we all saw it. And I speak for our entire office. We thank you for that. In addition to honoring the life and service of Tommy Weeks, we also pay tribute to three other men who tragically lost their lives last week. U.S. Marshal Service Task Force Officers Alden Elliott and Sam Pelosi, both with the North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections and Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officer Joshua Iyer. Five officers were also injured during Monday's standoff. Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officers Mike Giglio, Jack Blowers, Justin Campbell, and Chris Tolley. Also injured was U.S. Marshal Service Task Force Officer and Statesville Police Corporal Casey Hoover. We are eternally grateful for their devotion to duty and valor. I want to take this time to also acknowledge and thank the greater Charlotte community, the state of North Carolina, and the entire country for your overwhelming support. We thank the Checkers hockey team and all the staff and the Bojangles Entertainment Complex for your tireless endeavor to support this memorial ceremony. 
We are deeply moved. We sincerely thank you. I'd also like to take the opportunity to express our heartfelt appreciation to the neighboring agencies who provided invaluable assistance during the tragic events of last week. As that tragedy unfolded, these agencies selflessly stepped in to answer the call. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, police departments in Davidson, Cornelius, Huntersville, Mint Hill, Matthews, Pineville, the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office, along with the North Carolina Highway Patrol. You risked your lives so others may live. To our brothers and sisters in arms, we are truly grateful. I would like to now introduce the Attorney General of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Merrick Garland. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today to join with the Weeks family and this community to recognize Deputy U.S. Marshal Thomas Weeks. Mrs. Weeks, when I called you last Tuesday to convey the Justice Department's deepest condolences to your family, I hoped in some way to be able to provide you with comfort and support in the midst of your unimaginable loss. What I did not expect is that you would end the call by asking me what you could do to support the Marshal Service and the Justice Department in this time of immeasurable sadness. I called hoping to lift your spirits. The call ended with you lifting mine. And I know that is what you have been doing all week for both your family and for the U.S. Marshal Service family. Mrs. Weeks, I did not have the honor of knowing Tommy, but from everything I have heard about him, I know he would be very proud of you. Over the past several days, I have learned that Tommy loved his family deeply, his wife, his four children, his father, and his three brothers. I know that no words can adequately describe the pain that you are feeling now, that nothing can undo this horrible loss, and that there is not enough gratitude in the world to recognize the sacrifice that you and your family have made I have also learned that Tommy loved his U.S. Marshal Service family, and I know that today that family is not just grieving for a colleague, but for a friend and a brother. I also know that despite that grief, the U.S. Marshal's family and the entire law enforcement family here in Charlotte has stepped up to support the Weeks family. That is what working in law enforcement means means stepping up and showing up when things are most difficult and most painful. It means facing unacceptable threats and danger. It means supporting people and communities when they are experiencing some of their darkest days. It means putting your life on the line for the public that you serve. That is what Tommy did every single day during his career in law enforcement. That is what he did during his work with Customs and Border Protection. And that is what he did after joining the U.S. Marshals in 2011. He first worked in Washington, D.C., where he protected the D.C. Superior Court, and where he played on a hockey team alongside other deputy marshals and at least one judge. That judge recounted 
that Tommy always had a smile on his face, the biggest smile. Equally important, the judge said, was that Tommy was the kind of hockey player you always wanted on your side and the kind of person who the judges were glad to have on their side, protecting them. When Tommy arrived in the Western District of North Carolina, he quickly developed a reputation for being the kind of law enforcement officer and friend you could count on. No matter what he was doing, whether it was serving a warrant, protecting the courthouse, or carrying out an extradition in Poland or Colombia, he gave everything he had to make sure the task was done right. He was dependable, reliable, resilient, and passionate about serving his community. His colleagues say that he could be intense because he took his work so seriously. He knew how important his job was, and he never gave anything less than 110 percent. But they also say he could be funny in a dry sort of way, as you just heard. When Tommy arrived at the Western District, one colleague commented that he might just be a bit out of shape. Tommy replied, round is a shape. But Tommy didn't just leave it at that. Instead, he took it as a challenge. He started running the fastest he had ever run. Soon, he was running faster than everyone else, and he pushed his colleagues to constantly be better. That was the kind of marshal he was and the kind of leader he was. For all the seriousness he brought to his work, Tommy also brought care and a touch of tenderness to his work family. When a dear friend and a fellow deputy marshal became a grandmother, he started calling her Meemaw. When a close friend and fellow deputy marshal from D.C. was transferred to the Western District, he helped him find a place to live. The friend said it best, Tommy would give the shirt off his back to anyone. For Tommy, serving with the U.S. Marshal Service was a dream job. He was proud to be in a position in which he could inspire others. And as a history buff, he knew that he was part of one of the oldest law enforcement agencies in our country's history. He knew that his work to keep his community safe and to protect the judicial process upon which our democracy depends was of historic importance. As Tommy likely knew, the position of both Attorney General and U.S. Marshal, together with our federal court system, were all created at the same time under President George Washington's administration as part of the Judiciary Act of 1789. Our founders recognized that a country based on the rule of law could only survive as long as there were people, people like Tommy, willing to defend the institutions that sustain it. For more than two decades, I was a federal judge in Washington, D.C., working in another federal courthouse just down the block from where Tommy was working. In fact, I think I recognize our bomb dog over there in the corner. It's no exaggeration to say that federal judges put their lives in the hands of U.S. Marshals. Their service and their sacrifice makes it safe for judges to base their decisions on the law and not on fear. Our U.S. Marshals reflect the very best of what a public servant should be, dedicated, selfless, and courageous. That is what Tommy loved, did. That is what Tommy was, and that is how he lived his life. And that is how he always will be remembered. On April 29, 2024, Tommy made the ultimate sacrifice. He did so along with his colleagues, task force officers Alden Elliott, 
and Samuel Pelochi and Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officer Joshua Iyer. Their deaths stand as a stark reminder of the enormous risks our law enforcement officers face every day, even when making the relatively routine arrests they make every day. Every day, our law enforcement officers go to work knowing that day may be their last. Every day, their families send them off to work, praying it will not be. While this community will never be the same without the brave officers we lost on April 29th, it will always be safer because of them. There is no more honorable legacy than that. To the Weeks family, please know that your husband, your father, your son, your brother will always be remembered by this community and by our country as a hero. As we remember Tommy Weeks today, and in the days and years ahead, may, be, may we never stop working to fulfill the mission to which he dedicated his life. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Garland. I would like to now invite U.S. Marshal Service Director Ronald Davis to the podium. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. I have the great and distinct honor to serve as Director of the United States Marshal Service, an agency that the Attorney General mentioned founded at the creation of our great nation. And if I may, an agency that is the most iconic law enforcement agency in the history of the United States. Now, what makes the United States Marshal Service so great is very simple, the women and men of the agency people like Deputy United States Marshal Thomas Weeks, who sacrifices not just on April 29th, but for over 13 years helps define this agency. <clears throat> Our history at the service is full of legendary stories and accomplishments, but too often this success comes with tragic losses. On April 29th, 2024, we suffered one of the greatest losses in the history of the United States Marshal Service. Deputy U.S. Marshal Thomas Weeks, Task Force Officers William Alden Elliott and Samuel Pelosi, and Charles Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Officer Joshua Iyer were shot and killed while tracking down and apprehending a violent fugitive. As mentioned, four additional officers were shot and wounded, and a fifth sustained serious injuries in this incident. I can think of no words to say that will somehow lessen the pain or the loss. This day for me will be etched in my heart and soul for eternity. But I do take some comfort in knowing that we are not grieving alone, that this enormous loss is felt by families, communities, law enforcement officers across the country. In fact, the entire nation is grieving with us. But as we do mourn, let us seek refuge and solace through the memories and the stories of these heroes, how they lived, how they sacrificed, and what impact they had on all of us. There is an inscription on the National Law Enforcement Memorial Fund Wall in D.C. that says this, and I think it captures how we should proceed for it. It is not how these officers died that made them heroes, it is how they lived. So today, we remember and honor Deputy United States Marshal Thomas Weeks Tommy for his life and how he lived. To Tommy's family, his wife Kelly, his father Thomas, and his children, 
Abby, Patrick, Grady, and McKenzie, please accept on behalf of the United States Marshal Service our deepest condolences. I would also like to share our condolences with the families and friends of officers Elliot, Pelosi, and Iyer, and the entire Charlotte Mecklenburg community. As we mourn the loss of Tommy, let us be thankful for each moment that we share with him, whether as a deputy or in his favorite role as dad or husband, and as you heard, as a history buff and an aspiring athlete. Now, I find it interesting that I'm looking at the hockey shirt, number 19, that I heard a story that Tommy took great pride, almost to the point of bragging, about the goal he scored on the Canadian law enforcement hockey team. And I guess I'm not a hockey fan, but I guess, I guess it's very serious in Canada. And so he did a tremendous job, and I guess he would always talk about that single goal. But after meeting Tommy's wife, it is also clear why he, is, why he was so intense and how you, I would, I'm not going to say tamed him, but you lessened him. You know, over the past week, I've come to learn more about Tommy through his wife, family, and friends. And let me just say this, it seemed like just an amazing life and an incredible journey. To Tommy's father, Thomas, thank you, and your late wife, Bonnie, for raising such an incredible man. It is crystal clear that the apple did not fall far from the tree. And mentioned before, mentioned before is after meeting Tommy's wife, Kelly, is also clear that Tommy was a very, very smart and lucky man. He was smart enough to marry up and lucky enough to find you, Kelly. Now, anyone who has met Kelly for even a minute knows that she is a pillar of strength. As the Attorney General mentioned, when we should be consoling you, you have focused your time and your energy to console us. You have went to the district, you have talked to our deputies, you have talked to the Marshall family. You are truly amazing, and Kelly, you have inspired all of us. You bring great dignity and honor to Tommy and his legacy. To Abby, Patrick, Brady, and McKenzie, nothing or no one can replace your dad, but you are now part of the United States Marshall Service family, which means you have thousands of cousins and uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters who will continue to be a part of your life. But Abby and McKenzie, that's the good news. The bad news is between Trey and Ryan and a whole bunch of the deputies, I feel extremely sorry for anyone that wants to date you. In fact, I've been told that we have some arrangements for any upcoming proms that what most will ride in limos, you will be in a Bearcat surrounded by deputy U.S. Marshals. So any young man that can get past that, we will see. But that's what you're going to get with this new family. During the past week, I've also heard from Tommy's friends who describe him, as you heard, a tremendous person, a very intense person, but full of life and vigor. Possessing a smile, they said, could change hearts and minds. Let us remember that smile. Let it continue to bring you joy. The loss for us is permanent, but the pain does not have to be. As President Biden said, there will come a time when the thought of Tommy, his memory, will bring a smile to your lips before it brings a tear to your eyes. My greatest wish and prayer is that time comes very, very soon. To the United States Marshal Service family, we will have many tough days ahead trying to make sense of this tragedy and to cope with such an enormous loss. Let us embrace the traits and qualities that made Tommy such an outstanding deputy and dad and husband and father. And let's, let us commit to live life as fully as Tommy did. To honor Deputy Weeks is to remain steadfast to our service to our communities and to our core values of justice, integrity, and service. The American people deserve nothing less, and Tommy wouldn't have it any other way. We are all hurting, but we will work together. We will hurt together. We will grieve together, and we will heal together by continuing the important work that Tommy and the other heroes sacrificed our lives for. To our sisters and brothers in law enforcement, I have no words to thank you for the tremendous outpouring of support. It means more than you can ever imagine, and we are forever grateful. To the American people, you have witnessed the true nature, courage, and character of American law enforcement. These four heroes would tell you, if they could, that they were not special and they're not the exception, rather the norm, that their sacrifice, their duty, their efforts, their tremendous call to duty represents and reflects the day-to-day -day commitment 
of the entire law enforcement community. I think we all owe a huge debt of gratitude to our law enforcement officers. So I'm asking the American people today, I'm asking them to honor these heroes, to show our gratitude for law enforcement by doing two meaningful, kind acts. One, take time today to say thank you to a law enforcement officer you see. And two, please take a moment to pray for all law enforcement officers and their families. For without these heroes, we would not be a nation of laws, nor enjoy the freedoms that serve as the foundation of our democracy. And in closing, to Deputy Thomas Weeks, your tour of duty is now over. Know that you have served with great distinction, honor, courage, and pride. America's star, a symbol of strength, and courage, and empathy, and compassion, and commitment shines brighter today than it did 13 years ago when you joined us. We, will love, we love you, we will miss you, and we will never forget you. Your legacy is now embedded and inscribed into the heart and soul of the United States Marshal Service. Past, current, and future members of the United States Marshal family will know your name, they will share your story, and they will embrace and respect your legacy. You have done well, you have served with great honor. Thank you for that. It is time now, Tommy, for you to rest in peace. We got it from here. Thank you, Director Davis. I would like to now invite Judge Robert Conrad to the podium. Sunday's Gospel reading frames our reflection today. Greater love has no man than he lay down his life for his friends. This is, is of course, what Deputy Marshal Tommy Weeks did on Monday, April 29, 2024. This is what we honor today. A deputy who lost his life in service to his community in fulfillment of his commitment to his brothers and sisters in law enforcement, in living his life to the full, and doing the job he loved. To Kelly and the Weeks family, to the brothers and sisters of the United States Marshals Service, and to the broader law enforcement community, to all of Tommy's friends gathered here today, we salute a hero. A hero in death, but as well and importantly, a hero in life, whose example speaks to a higher purpose in life. Real heroism, the kind Tommy exemplified, requires courage and selflessness. The hero's deed is ennobled not by courage alone, but by the call to duty or by service to others. In this, it gains a larger symbolic value that can inspire. Tommy died bravely. He lived heroically. We are indebted to him. We are inspired by him. We are better for having known him. His life demonstrated that life can be what it should be, that bravery and self-sacrifice occur because there are beliefs and responsibilities which warrant bravery and self-sacrifice. The hero tells us, Tommy tells us, there is indeed purpose in human life. We miss him. 
We miss that smile, the joy he ra radiated doing his job. He treated all with respect, his colleagues, attorneys both for the prosecution and the defense, the court and its employees, and especially the incarcerated witnesses and defendants he was tasked with bringing to court every day. If you encountered Tommy doing his job, you came away with respect and you came away feeling respected. He could be a handful. During one tense hearing in his early days with our court, there was a scuffle. The court needed to make a record, so I called upon the deputy marshal to testify as to what had just transpired. All we got was Tommy's laconic answer, he acted up, I took care of it. That was it, not much of a record. But in going back to the transcript, I discovered that Tommy had his own frustrations that day. During the hearing, I kept referring to him as Deputy Meeks. Well, we all know that there is nothing meek about Tommy. Unbeknownst to me, multitasking Tommy was able to keep control of the courtroom while simultaneously testing texting his frustration to T.J. Haycox, a law clerk. Tommy's text said, referring to me, he keeps calling me Meeks. T.J. responds, sorry. Tommy, it's weeks. But then he texts, it's okay. It was always okay with Tommy Weeks. He would not let something like a judge mispronouncing his name affect his performance or to stand in the way of a friendship that would grow over the next 10 years. G.K. Chesterton once wrote about the death of a family member. For real strength, I don't like the word comfort. For real peace, no human words are much good except perhaps some of the unfathomable, unintelligible, unconquerable epigrams of the Bible. One such text was, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servant. He concluded, for his death awoke in one a passionate sense of the value of his life, so that even his death was a thing of incalculable value and mysterious sweetness. It is awful, tragic, desolating, desperately hard to bear, but still precious. Chesterton knew, as we know about Tommy, that his death was beautiful. The reason that it did not seem beautiful in the moment was that we do not see it now. What we see is his absence. But his death is not his absence, but his presence somewhere else. That presence in the place where there is no more pain, no more tears, we can only imagine. And in our imagining, we see Tommy smiling and we see our Lord saying to Mr. Weeks, well done, good and faithful servant. Come, enter into your rest. Tommy often heard a judge saying at the end of a sentencing matter, this matter is concluded. The defendant is remanded to the custody of the marshals. I would like to say here, these remarks are concluded. Tommy's spirit and his memory are remanded to his family and to his brothers and sisters of the United States Marshals Service. May they live forever. Loving son, husband and father, courageous law enforcement officer, 
good friend, faithful servant, hero. May you rest in peace. Amen. Thank you, Judge Conrad, for those kind words. I would now like to invite Tommy's close friend, Deputy U.S. Marshal Ryan King, to the podium. Take all this in for a couple seconds. First, I'd like to give honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. My name is Ryan King. I'm a 13-year veteran with the United States Marshal Service. My career began in January 2011 in Washington, D.C., at D.C. Superior Court. In the spring of 2011, the Tommy Weeks experience began. From a.m. AM and p.m. overtimes, weekend overtimes, happy hours after long days, it allowed us to connect and build our bond. Washington Redskins, Washington Nationals, Washington Capitals, and Hamilton's $5 buckets of beers, it allowed us to build a special and competitive bond. In 2013, the Washington Nationals were playing the St. Louis Cardinals in Washington, D.C. And it was my, my mission to heckle left fielder Matt Holliday in an attempt to get him off his ex. I told Tommy I was going to search Wikipedia to get as much information on his wife and children, and I succeeded. Tommy stated, you don't have a hair on your ass. To this date, I don't understand if that was an insult or a slap of motivation. I proceeded to heckle the all-star left fielder and got him to break character and was later approached by ushers and security stating, yo, big man. <laughs> security proceeded to explain it was brought to our attention. You was using vulgar language, explicit language, being disrespectful, tasteless, and causing a distraction to the game. I stated I had paid my $37 for that, my ticket, and it was my duty to distract our team's opponent by any means. Short time passed, and I was allowed to return to my seat with Tommy and my coworkers, and Tommy acted like he didn't know me. In 2014, I was working a court assignment with my buddy Tommy when he received the best email of his career. He had learned he would be heading back to the Western District of North Carolina, where he would re be reunited with his wife and children in Mooresville, North Carolina. In September of 2015, I also received good news. I was selected in OPREF and would be turning to, returning to the Middle District of North Carolina, where my family was, and I began my law enforcement career in Greensboro, North Carolina. Work and life events made it tough to keep in touch. Thankfully, Tommy's Carolina Panthers invitations kept our bond close and strong during the Cam Newton, Luke Keekley, Thomas Davis, and Christian McCaffrey era. 
tailgating, pre-gaming at Valhalla Pub and Belfast Mill Irish Pub allowed Tommy and myself to relive those great D.C. Superior Court memories. In spring of 2019, Tommy personally reached out to me and asked if I would visit him in a time of need. He was experiencing some, some hard times, and it was an honor that he reached out to me, his old buddy in Middle District, North Carolina, to offer an ear and shoulder to lean on. David's college workouts, sprints, stadium stairs, high-intensity workouts helped offer Tommy the time that he needed to get his mind off of his challenges. In spring of 2020, I was encouraged by Tommy to put in for an opening in the Western District of North Carolina. Tommy stated he would put a good word in to district leadership if I was going to put in for that opening position. I was later selected in the voluntary reassignment opportunity in Charlotte, and our bond was rekindled once again. For the first time in my career, I was able to work fugitive and criminal investigations alongside with my buddy Tommy. We brainstormed together. We shared investigative techniques. We worked surveillance together. We were like Danny Glover and Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. Tommy and myself would quote that movie many, many times. Both in our 40s, I'm getting too old for this shit. It was a great feeling to be able to pick each other's brains before conducting our fugitive operations. While working with Tommy, I learned he officially changed my name from Ryan or King to Yo, big man. Our cubicles were next to each other. I would roll back in my chair as Tommy typed away as loud as he could on his computer, and I would joke by asking, excuse me, sir, can you by chance type any louder? I would ask him, yo, big man, where are we eating today? I would miss the days where he would respond, I'm not eating today, because I'm cutting. Shout out to the Hodge twins. When Tommy introduced me to his wife, Kelly, I was blown away by the view of Lake Norman from their living room window. Looking down at their dock, seeing their fire pit, their boat with a large inner tube tied to it, it looked as if it could carry my big ass. Multiple times I would joke to Tommy and whisper to him, yo, big man, don't mess this up for us. Tommy, myself, and a few non-law enforcement friends would have weekend getaways in the spring and fall in Ocean City, Maryland to reset our mentals. Nights at Bull at the Beach with ice cold Natty Bows, Jameson and Gingers, and electric darts. Tommy made sure the bartender, Pete, would always remember us. Tommy introduced himself to Pete, who was an old, old school knuckle dragging bartender from Pennsylvania. And he had told both that both we were deputy, deputies with the United States Marshal Service and gifted him with a challenge coin and a patch from the Western District of North Carolina to add to the collection of law enforcement patches on their wall of fame. Tommy also shared with Pete that he was a University of Maryland alum and I was a graduate from Indiana State University. Every year the guys returned to Ocean City, we would show face and bull at the beach and Pete would always greet us with, hey, it's the Turpin and the Sycamore. Tommy made it his mission that he wanted to be recognized as the light in this dark world. Tommy was a very unique, unique human being. From the time I crossed paths with him in the spring of 2011 to the exact time that the Lord called him home on April 29, 2024, Tommy Boy was a true shining star. He was original, he was authentic, he was passionate, he was resilient, he was competitive, he was a leader, a warrior, a hero to many, an inspiration and a mentor. I stated all week, Tommy Boy was legit one of one. He has left so many memories to every soul that he's touched, from DC Superior Court to his journey back to Western District of North Carolina. Tommy loved his job, Tommy loved his country, he loved his friends, he adored his family. His desk is flooded with images of his wife, Kelly, Abby, Patrick, and tons of paraphernalia of Washington Nationals, Washington Capitals, Washington Redskins. 
Baltimore Ravens, and even his PGA scorebooks as he was a golf fanatic. The world lost four amazing brothers, sons, fathers, husbands, nephews, cousins, grandsons, and heroes seven days ago. Not a day will go by that Tommy Wicks will be forgotten. Julie Van Skyver, DIC in Asheville, forwarded me an amazing poem, and I told her I would share it. The poem is called, Do Not Stand at My Grave and Weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I'm a diamond glitz on snow. I'm the sunlight on ripened grain. I'm a gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I'm the, I'm the swift uplifted rush of quiet birds and circled light. I'm the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand by my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I pray that everyone in this Coliseum and across this nation can heal together. I hope all the memories from all the fallen brothers from last week, Alden Elliott, Sam Pelosi, Joshua Iyer, and Tommy Weeks live on forever in our minds and our hearts. May God bless you all in all that you do. Tommy Weeks, you are 1042. Thank you, Ryan. I would now like to invite Deputy U.S. Marshal Brian Williams to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. When I was first asked about speaking at Thomas Memorial, I hesitated. I got nervous, fear, doubt, and selfishness came over me. The complete opposite of who Tommy is. Tommy would have said, Dub, don't worry about it. Just go up there and do the best you can. So that's when I realized Tommy deserved better from me. Tommy deserved my very best if I was going to stand up here and speak about him today. So it's been said about Tommy's passion. T.W. is very, very passionate about a lot of things. He's passionate about life, sports, but there's one thing above all that would get that passion brewing in the office, and that was capture. Now, if it wasn't for the youngsters in the audience, I would share some of those passionate comments he had to say, but it'd probably be a little bit inappropriate right now, all right? So is anyone from the capture team in here reviewing this live? It's all good. He has had a few already quotes he might want to tell you about. But words, not, words weren't the only thing or the only form that Tommy would release all this passion he had about this system. If you was in the office and you seen a chair rolling down the aisle or a trash can flying across the room, you knew Tommy was in the office. Tommy keyboard and mouse didn't stand a chance. I mean, when that passion reached a boiling point, and he got frustrated. All you heard was that mouse and keyboard flapping up and down on the daggum desk with a loud suck. But there wasn't no S in front of that word. You can put an F in front of it. Now you start to get the picture now what time it was like. But then when it was time to do work, TW 
what we like to call him, Tommy did work. You couldn't ask for a better partner, whatever the task was that needed to be done. Tommy did it without complaining, hesitation. He was always there by your side when you needed him. Now for everyone, a lot of folks may not get this, but for everyone in my office, Tommy loved his movie quotes. Now he could give you all the characters, quotes, and the exact address of the Blue Oyster Bar from the Police Academy without missing the beat. And he also loved to remind us of Axel Foley's requisition orders and what happened to the Ferrari in Beverly Hills Cop. I mean, he would pull this stuff up on the phone and had us all die laughing at the classics. But uh, the director, Attorney General, don't worry, this wasn't doing government time, this was on lunch breaks. <laughs> and it wasn't doing government furnishing equipment, he had his own personal cell phone. <laughs> so the Marsh Service has three solid principles. Justice, integrity, service. But there are three others that Tommy exemplify that he didn't have to join the Marine Corps to acquire. And that's honor, courage, and commitment. All my devil dolls in the house, they know what I'm talking about. So Tommy, it has been an honor to have laughed, served, and lived by your side. Your courage amazes me as you met every challenge and duty without hesitation, Fear, and if there was any fear, you pushed through it and you did what was right. And your commitment, your commitment to your family, friends, and colleagues is second to none. You gave us everything you had every day. Now, T.W. went hard with everything that he did. So at this time, it's time for us to go hard in the paint for him. So, a little bit of IS participation here. I want everyone in this building, and I mean everyone, don't be shy. I want you all to give Tommy an oorah on three. I'm gonna say it again. That's an oorah on three, so don't mess it up. So let's shake the roof off this building for Tommy. So one. Two, three. Hoorah! Outstanding. That's what I'm talking about. So, Tommy, I felt that, so I know you did too. So, as I close, Tommy, Tommy may be at peace, but his spirit will not rest. When we are down and in doubt, he will lift us up. When dark times come, and they will, he will be a light in the tunnel to guide us through. And when we are tired and beat and worn out, TW will give us the strength to keep moving. So TW, as you continue your journey, travel knowing that we will lay Thank you, Brian. From my first call to Kelly on April 29th to this morning, as I look upon her right now, she has been a rock and a pillar of strength. I dare say that in many instances, she has exhibited greater strength and resolve in the support system 
that we have placed around her since last Monday. She is strong, determined, decisive. As we welcome her to the podium, I implore you not just to hear her, but listen to her. Now, it's my honor to introduce you to Tommy's wife, Mrs. Kelly Weeks. Well, as you can see, I don't follow directions very well. I was supposed to come straight up, so I'm sure my boss over here is giving me the, the signal of uh, that wasn't, the, that wasn't the, the, the plan. So I altered the plan. Um, so bear with me. A uh, couple things I want to share with you. First off, I'm humbled by all the people here. Tommy would be humbled. He would love the fact that uh, we're in a hockey arena. He's probably right now looking at me saying, this is where I should have been all the time. Well, Why did you wait till then now? So a lot of things I want to say. A lot of things I'm going to tell you about Tommy. And a lot of things I want our country to hear. And please bear with me throughout it. Um, luckily, my support dogs are here. May I see ma'am and legend? If you know anything about me, I have obsessions with small children and Labrador retrievers. And I've had two, and I've actually had three of the U.S. Marshal Service's dogs around here and been watching them all day. I see, her, I see them down there keeping an eye on me. So I'm gonna start with something that Director Davis gave me on the very first day when he came to see me at my house. And he told me about a poem and I have, that poem has stuck with me since we met. So I'm gonna read that poem to you guys, and then we will talk a little bit from there. So the poem is called The Dash by Linda Ellis. And it goes like this. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from beginning to the end. He noted that the first date came, the date of birth, and he spoke the following dates with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For the dash represents all the time that he spent alive on earth. And not only the, now only those who loved him know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger, show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say and how you spent your dash? Thank you, Director. That poem spoke to me. And it is the epitome of Tommy. So what I'm gonna do for the next 45 minutes to an hour, you guys are good, right? Don't need any snacks? Maybe, maybe a little less than that. I'm gonna tell you 
how Thomas Michael Weeks Jr. spent his dash. First off, he was a loving father to not only to his kids, but also his stepchildren. He enjoyed everything from watching Patrick when he was performing to his nightly goodnight hugs and I love you to Abby. He would make Dunkin' Donuts runs for McKenzie even after mom said no. And he took Brady to DC to see his first Capitals game. It was not only our Coast family at home, but his entire extended family that he'd want to go visit in Maryland. He loved everything in Maryland. Ocean City was his mecca. I think it's Myrtle Beach in, 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 in uh, the, the East Coast, but he said there's something special about Ocean City. It's different. I'm a North Carolina girl. We'll, let, we'll, let, we'll leave it there, but he loved Ocean City. He also loved his three brothers and would often talk about their childhood and what a house with four boys looked like. He always mentioned how strong his mother was and how much he adored his dad. Now, if you're one of Tommy's friends, you know he would do anything to make you feel special, insisting you drink a Guinness or have a glass of whiskey. He would be inviting you to play golf or come to the lake or just give you a call to see how you were doing. So at this point, I'm going to ask each of you to give me a little bit of grace because now I'm gonna tell you about Tommy the husband. So many people have referred to him as a hero, but before this tragedy, he was already a hero to me and our family. Tommy loved my parents and my family like his own. He was always want to do things to help out, to prove that he was worthy to be my husband, to my father, whose approval he was very concerned to have. What he could never comprehend that it was his devotion and love to me that made my father most proud to have him as a son-in-law. I woke up every single day to a man telling me he loved me. You're the most beautiful woman. How lucky I am to have you. What he didn't realize is I was truly the lucky one. I had my protector always watching out for me, watching out for me so much that I could not walk on a sidewalk without him being on the outside where the cars were. I received love and affection all the time. He never let me be more than an arm's length away so that he could hold my hand or rub my back. It is all these small things on top of the really big things that he did that helped me be a better person. He made me feel invincible. He truly believed I could do anything and when someone sees you through that lens, you really start to believe it. When I met my husband, I lived in a bubble, a bubble where I had no idea what law enforcement sees every day. It was a happy bubble. No violence, no criminals, nothing that the world sees was in my bubble. And as I look out on this crowd, I see so many law enforcement officers from all over the country here to pay their respects. And it is a clear reminder of the sacrifice these men and women make every day to protect our bubble. If you do not serve or in a family that has individuals who do serve, you sleep peacefully at night knowing you're protected by many brave men and women. But more importantly, that protection comes at a cost for each and every one of their families. So I've been asked, what can we do? How can we help? What do you need? Tommy's mission in life was to make the world safer and fight for justice. So what do I need? I need this country to come together, to support our law enforcement officers so they can continue to fight for justice like my husband did. Thank an officer every single day. Encourage our children to show police officers the proper respect. This tragedy was the result of someone who did not have any regard for human life. My sincere hope is that people will remember Thomas Michael Weeks Jr. for years and years to come, and that memory will make them want to lift up his fellow brothers and sisters 
in any law enforcement capacity. When tragedy hits, you have two choices. Give up and be defeated, or use the tragedy as an opportunity to make a change. For those of you who don't know me, there was no option. Number two is the only option for me. I want to help them make a change in our country for the good so that we come together and work together to see the positives we have in this country and the people who sacrifice so that we can have them. I have been personally humbled by all the kindness this country has shown me during this difficult time. I have received prayers, cards, calls, food, and food, and food. I've ex received extremely generous donations to help our family, but most importantly, I hope my experience can give some of you a renewed faith in humanity. My hearts and prayers go out to the other families who lost their loved ones and the families that are still trying to heal from this tragedy. I need to give a very, very special thanks to the United States Marshal Service for how much support they have showed me. From the moment I arrived at the hospital, the critical incident response team, as they call it, the CERT team, was there to help me through this journey and they have not left my side since. Maybe bossed me a few times, but it was for good reasons. And if you know anything about me, I don't like to be told what to do. But some people have mastered the ability to tell me what to do and I actually listen. So my company's trying to hire him to see if he can do that in other capacities. Approximately 50 people have been working day and night to put this together, this event. This did not happen by one person. This can't happen by one person. They've spent time away from their families. And they've, every time I say thank you, they say, it is my honor. It is my honor. They worked around the clock to ensure that they could do anything to ease my pain, they would do it. Tommy is resting peacefully because he knows that his brothers and sisters are surrounding us with love and support. And we are honored to be a part of the U.S. Marshal Service family. So I want to leave you with something that a dear friend shared with me because she was inspired by the U.S. Marshal Badge Star. And as I look out in the crowd, I see so many stars staring back at me from all the different agencies you work for, making this even more special. If you look up at the sky at night, which Tommy and I often did looking over the lake, Sometimes you will notice some stars just aren't like others. In a universe full of trillions of stars, some just shine brighter than the rest. They seem to flow, to shimmer, to attract light from all around them. And the largest and brightest of these stars actually die before all of the others. They just burn too fast for the universe to hold them. And in the end, they sacrifice all the parts that made them whole so that other stars can be born from their passing. Tommy's star certainly burned fast and shone bright and leaves a legacy that will continue to shape and inspire others. So it's with my sincere appreciation to each of you for you being here, for supporting me, for continuing my message that we will support our law enforcement. We will make a difference. My husband's tragedy cannot be just another death. It has to be for something bigger. And the only way I can do that is with a group of people here to help me spread this message as far as I can get it. And I can be very loud. So I will close with, I to my husband, I will love you forever, my very sweet man. Thank you.
Thank you, Kelly. We hurt with you, but know we will always be here for you and your family. We love you. At this time, we will now present the family of Tommy Weeks with the presentation of colors.
call you and clear the air for priority traffic. Dispatch to 30172. Dispatch to 30172. Dispatch to 30172. Deputy Tommy Lee. All units be advised that 30172. Deputy Tommy Lee. Watch has ended and is answered his highest and final call on April 29, 2024. Godspeed. Deputy Lee, your family, and your brothers and sisters, and Blue will take it from here. On behalf of the United States Department of Justice, the United States Marshal Service, and the Western District of North Carolina, we thank you for joining us today to honor Tommy. Beyond the darkness, there is light. Beyond the sorrow, there is peace. If everyone would please remain standing for the departure of Tommy's family and our official party. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes today's ceremonies. God bless. Be safe.